Awo, Shalom, Rastafari. There's a few things on I and I mind, a couple of things related to this particular um, Torah portion known as Av, which we call the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbatical Sabbath Study Number 25. This is Av or Sao, and it comes from Sawa, Sawa, or Sava, or Seva, Sava, which means command. Now, this particular Torah portion, which is in um, a Vayikra, the Vayikra, which is the Hebrew book of Leviticus, and this is our um, Torah study right here, um, it comprises, once again, just go over this basic foundation, connects this with what we have taught previously, the vi previous video we posted, the 25th weekly Torah portion, Parasha, in our annual Hebraic cycle of Torah readings, and it's the second in the book of Leviticus. It constitutes Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1, to Leviticus chapter 8, verse 36. Now, this is read by us in the diaspora, we Ethiopian Hebrews in the diaspora, in the 24th or the 25th uh, Shabbat, or Senbet after the Simchat Torah, the joy of the Torah, generally in March or early April. Now, the the sixth of April, and basically that is this um, uh, Shabbat Eve, is um, a Pesach in the Hebrew or Fasika in the Ethiopic is is our Passover, and we want to present a vid on that. So that we can celebrate even in the diaspora and as as scattered as we are now, that we can still remember. He says, do this, our black Lord and Savior Yeshua. HaMoshiach says, do this in remembrance. So this is a this is a memorial um, meal. It's, it's it's a memorial supper. But now we know that the roots of this, the groundation, the foundation of it, even as the Moshiach, as Yeshua, Yesus Christos, demonstrated in the Gospels, is in the Law of Moses, it's in the Prophets, and it's in the Psalms of David. This is what he taught them after his resurrection. Now, we, we touched on the first couple of verses of um, Leviticus chapter 6 already previously speaking on the trespass, the trespass, um, the trespass offering. Now, in continuing it, as we go in now into the, into the next chapter, if we continue this into the next chapter, those who have the Schofield, turn your Bibles to chapter 7, verse 11. Now, there is so much that's embedded in these these Sabbath portions and in, in, in the Torah and these paragraphicals. And if you look at the um, Schofield Reference Bible, you'll see how it has subscriptions explaining and giving New Testament references, New Testament references. So you can see how Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, how he fulfilled as the gospel says, he fulfilled the Old Testament types. But now if you go around to the majority of um, um, nominal Christians or those who call themselves Christians, the majority of them, they will say that, but they don't know how to really explain it and they don't really know it in heart and in mind. You know, so therefore it's, it's, it's unprofitable. It's what Christ said when they say to him, Lord, Lord. Haven't we, you know, cast out demons, heal people? We've done all this stuff in your name. And he'll say, get away from me. I never knew you. You know what I'm saying? You workers of iniquity. You know what I'm saying? This is why we have to avoid these, these foolish and unlearned questions, even from other black so-called Hebrews, you know what I'm saying, concerning Rastafari, concerning Haile Selassie, so forth and so on. We can't even waste our precious um, soul building time. You understand? We, don't, we can't waste precious time on those foolish and unlearned debates in the Gospels, the Scriptures, the Epistles. They instruct us. And this is why these things are written as the King of Kings, 
our God Father, Abba Kedus, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, so says. They're written for our instruction. Just like the Bible also witnessed. These are written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the world have come upon us in this very time, the end of an age. You understand the so-called Gentile world dominion. You understand the end of an age, the end of a, of a cosmic cycle. You understand this, this is where we're at right now. We're at the doors, so to speak. Now, let's get into this right here from the available time that we have. So what we want to do in this particular vid right here is touch on the law of the offerings. You understand the law of the offerings, and the fifth is the peace, what's known as the peace offerings. Now, in the previous uh, Torah portion, um, named Vayikra, in the previous Torah portion, Bamarinya Tarto, which means, and he called, and he called Moses and gave him these, 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 these laws concerning sacrifice. Now this is this is a point I don't know if many of y'all as Rastafari we're conscious of it in, 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 in the spirit of Jah about the debtors, you know, and, and we say I and I and I deal with the debtors. You, you always and we might not really understand the spirit of God even working in the movement why we even have that vegetarian or non animal flesh, you understand, know, perspective. Because you often hear Christians say that he abolished the law, that what Christ did on the cross with our black Lord, what Joshua did on the cross was abolish, was abolish the law. Now, what law? Which law? Because, see, what we have here in Leviticus, you understand, know is the law of the Levitical, the Levitical priesthood. You understand, and the, the, the Levitical code. Now, we mentioned this before, and make a note of this that the reason why we have Leviticus is because of the golden calf incident. You see, because the Almighty already gave them the ten words, or the Decalogue, what we call the Ten Commandments, or what is called the Ten Commandments. Really, it is one command. And if you study it, you'll find out that it's not ten commandments, it's one command that has ten articles or ten words. This is why it's called the Decalogue or the Ten Words, right? Now, they said that whatever, you know, whatever Moses says and whatever Jah tells Moses and Moses says, they said, we will do. But as soon as Moses was up in the mount in Sinai, getting those gracious laws and that way for us, our ancestors, to become that nation, a nation, not just one tribe, but a nation of the priesthood, the people had gone backward. You understand they had gone backward, and thus we have the so-called golden calf um, incident. Now, the golden calf incident, as you checked out some of the previous videos, we tried to demonstrate and show how what is going on among the lost sheeple, so-called black people who don't know their true identity, who are lost, in this, in this end time conspiracy against the king of kings and his Christ, they have gone into this golden calf. We have a, a spiritual Egypt. You remember what it says in the law? Even Deuteronomy, it says that they shall return hither. You know and it says, in the last days, ye will overstand and comprehend these things perfectly. And this is what many of us are beginning to recognize as we start to study these things even in more detail and in more depth, we're starting to really recognize the, the past, what occurred in the past, and what's going on now, and, and the real spiritual um, conspiracy in a sense. You understand? There's really two conspiracies. There's a conspiracy against Jah and his Moshia, Christ and his kingly character, and there is the conspiracy of those of I and I brothers and sisters who conspire or breathe together. That's what conspiracy means. It means to breathe together. Now, I'm going a little bit ahead of I and I self because if we can go through this particular portion, and if you have the Scofield, if you don't, go to the website, www.lojsociety.org, and you can download the PDF and, and utilize, and you can find out exactly the notes that we are using in this particular lecture right here. Now, 
a point I want to make, and this is from this book right here, which is called The National Sunday Law. Some of you might have seen it. I think you probably can go on the Internet and they might have a PDF version of it. And the last couple of pages, page 89, is the appendix, appendix 11. It speaks of the ceremonial law and the two covenants. And they say there's the distinction between the moral law of God, which is the Ten Commandments. This is what was given in Shemot, you understand, in Orit Zetz'at, or in the book of Exodus. But remember, towards the end of the book of Exodus, you know, we get the golden calf, um, the golden calf incident, the apostasy, you know, where they basically, they, they, they gave their word, and then they went backward. Yovis, and we learned about the 3,000 that were slain, and then we have a New Testament, we compared it with the 3,000 which were saved in the church. You understand, the 3,000 souls, it actually says, and that's key right there. You understand, the 3,000 souls that were saved. So we see the, the wrong way of doing it, you understand, with a veil over their eyes. That's what it says in the reading of um, Moses, there is a there is a palpable veil that's over their eyes apart from the Moshiach. You understand? Apart from the illumination of the testimony of Christ. If you just study the Old Testament, all we have here is, is a bunch of sacrifices. And I, I saw something interesting in this uh, Vayikra going over it. Let's see if we can find that particular part when um, the other other Hebrews and Jews had reasoned on this previously, and they give a little mention right here to um, to the sacrifice. And we found that we found this to be a little bit interesting. Let's see if we can can bring this up. That um, the people, when they heard about all these sacrifices, they were very, you know, they were very very sad. And then Moses reminded them that to study the Torah. You know what I'm saying? It's more than to do all the sacrifices. And there's a, there's a little clip here. I don't know if I highlighted it. I'll find it and I'll seek to bring it to you forward. Um, what, what I spoke about uh, when the people heard about all these sacrifices, they were, they were, you know, they were saddened and they were reminded that the study of the Torah is much higher you see, because we study the Torah and we occupy ourselves with the study of Torah and, 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 and to live it out on a day-to-day -day basis. We grow, you understand, both in faith and in spirituality, and like begins to attract like. We begin to, we could say, mystically meet our brothers and sisters and others who, who, have, the same, who have the same motivation. You know, it's not trying to make believe, you know, make somebody else believe who already is going their own way. You understand? But to separate yourself, you understand? In other words, give yourself the time and the opportunity to meditate and study the Word so you can know the truth for yourself. Because even Yeshua said, the ones who do it, you understand, will know it. You understand? And this is why we want to prepare for the Fasica this year and give some of the basic instructions about how properly to do it and keep it in Christ in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of Kedus Abatachin, to the glory of our Holy Father. Now, um, let's see, yeah, the Midrash taught that if the people repent, it's accounted as if they had gone up to Jerusalem, built the temple and the altars, and offered all the sacrifices in the Torah, that, that Jah accounts studying the sacrifices as equal to offering them. So we know that in Christ, that these um, animal sacrifices, they were, a, they were to be a type. They were to be a teachable moment. Now, when you connect that with the fact that the people had turned back away from what they said and got back into, like, idolatry, you understand? But even the idolatry of the calf is interesting. And this is what I also want to, you know, what I also want to share with the eye um, let me just look once again and see if I could find that, that, that brief uh, section. Nicole, when you're studying, when you're studying a whole lot, you know, begins to come to the heavens and begins to reveal themselves, 
you know, within the study, some things you might have had some questions. Sometimes people have questions about things, and they just focus on those questions. They should focus on the studies. And if they, oh, here we got it. If they focus on the studies, you understand? And these questions are concerning the King of Kings and his Christ, concerning Jah, concerning Joshua, you know what I'm saying? Concerning I and I. Then they'll find the answers. Here we have a, a Rebbe, one named Aha. This is page 73 of the Vayikra. Um, it says, compared the listing of Leviticus 7.37 to a ruler who entered a province escorting many bands of robbers as captives. Upon seeing the scene, one citizen expressed his fear of the ruler. A second citizen answered that as long as their conduct was good, they had no reason to fear. They had no reason to fear. Now, it's interesting how some of the, the sages and the rabbis, and even in Judaism, you understand, um, would use these kind of analogies, these parables. And then our master, our rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yesus Christos, also used the parables and used these parables. This is the next very important aspect of discipleship, learning the parables. You understand, really studying the parables. There's so much that's, that's embedded in those verbal hieroglyphics. Make a note of that. The parables equal verbal hieroglyphics. And we're going to demonstrate in just a moment. Similarly, when the Israelites, the Beta Israel, Israelawiyam, when they heard the section of Torah, of the Ori, dealing with sacrifices, they became afraid. And this is interesting because this is not one of the most, uh, at the outset, maybe, you know, with ones who, who are uh, Rastafari and, you know, the whole thing about you hear about the animals and get this animal and slay that animal. And many of us are not into that kind of uh, um, animal, animal holocaust, so to speak. But you have to understand that we are a later generation than our ancestors. So some things in consciousness, we can now look on their experience. And if you look back on history and you learn history, you see history in a sense it repeats itself, but you can also see the, the, the spiritual evolution. Now, this has nothing to do with the, the foolish arguments out there about evolution. So please don't even think we're going there with that kind of stuff. I mean, there is a, a truth to evolution. You understand? But we're not getting into the Gentile argument about the political, really, argument about, and, and on some level, the racist argument from their perspective on evolution. But it says, similarly, when the Israelites heard the section of Torah dealing with sacrifices, they became afraid. But Moses, Musa, what did he tell them? He told them not to be afraid. If they occupied themselves with the Torah, if they occupied themselves with the scriptures, with the Bible, they would have no reason to fear. They would have no reason to fear. So we found that to be very interesting, and we want to share that with the eye. Um, so let's get into this, and let's see how the Passover, you understand, and, and the one sacrifice of Yeshua is equal to all of those sacrifices, because all of those sacrifices from the Belui Kidan or the Old Covenant from the Old Testament, especially from the Pentateuch or the Torah, were, 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 were parables or types of that which was greater, you understand, as Christ even himself. And you, and you can note this, some of you already know what Christ would say, if I've told you earthly things and you don't understand earthly things, how would you be able to comprehend heavenly things? So if we can understand the, 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 the parable, you understand? Just what the parable is saying. If you get the spirit of the parable, then you can apply it to a multitude of situations that it will be hard to articulate all the situations because they, you know, they vary a little bit on the outer level. But the, the, the spirit of it, you understand? The spirit of it, this is really dealing with the metaphysics. This is really dealing with true spirituality. And so here the so-called religion or the teaching, the, the, the discipline helps us. You know, saying it helps us because it's part of a process. It's part of a process. So right here, we have a distinction between the moral law of God, the Ten Commandments, which were given before there was trespass, before there was 
the idolatry of the golden calf. Now, look carefully at the, at the difference of, in the two. The one with animal sacrifices. So, so it's pointing this out. The one with animal sacrifices was nailed to the cross. The other will stand forever. This is what a lot of folks don't really recognize, and we have to just remind, you know what I'm saying, remind you of this because it helps to put and keep everything in a proper context, right? So let's just put this up here. So we have what's called the ten, remember this part is, is a zacho um, um, tzav. Tzav is the imperative of, 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 of tzava or tzav, tzav or tzav. You know what I'm saying? Is the imperative, is the command, like, like, Izez, Izez Acho, Izez, command, you male singular, command them, command Aaron and his sons, or to say command the priesthood, because now Leviticus shows when the people came under law. You know what I'm saying? When we say we're not... We're not, we're not under the law. Because of Yeshua, we're not under the law of the animal sacrifices. You know what I'm saying? We're not under that law or the Levitical law. This is why Hebrews will show you how that was changed and that the evidence and how it's evident that our Lord, you know what I'm saying, that our Master sprung from Judah, sprung from the tribe of Judah, and thus we have the revelation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Now, those Israelites, you know, speaking about some of our other black and Hebrew Israelites that have many um, harsh and ungodly things to say of his imperial majesty, they need to first check out the facts of it. And you, my brothers and sisters, don't get so twisted about it. Remember, what, what is it, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 23? But uh, foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife, that they do gender strife. You know, you're getting caught up like the vid out there, uh, uh, worship of Hila Selassie, so forth and so on, where one's an argument, but it's basically an ignorant argument. You understand? I mean, limited, limited spiritual intellect on both sides. Instead, they should be spending more time studying the scripture. You understand? Studying the scripture and then showing and proving, not getting a little bit of intellectual knowledge and, you know, like headbanging on next one that might have more soul knowledge but don't have the intellect of the scriptures to really articulate the real point. But some are not even interested, you know, in the real truth of, of, of the matter. You know what I'm saying? They're not really interested in the truth of the matter, and you'll know them by their fruits. So if the best fruits that they have, you understand, is to, as, as, um, as Jude. Jude is Judah too. You, you know that, right? Jude, the book of Jude can be called the book of Judah, or it, it, it was known as the book of Judas, not the Judas the traitor. Not the Judas, not Iscariot, but but the the good Jew, the Jew, the Judah, the brother of Yaakov of James. So speaking of those apostate teachers, which are described, they may know that we as black people in America and the Caribbean are Israelites, but they're apostate teachers. Why? Because they are going against the evidence that our Lord sprung from the tribe of Judah. You know what I'm saying? They are going against the reality of that fact. And other Israelites, black Hebrew Israelites before them, you understand, before these project Israelites, they already recognized, you understand, the link between us and diaspora and Ethiopia vis-a-vis Kedemawi, Haile Selassie. So we don't have time to go over that regurgitation of those kind of things. You know, pray for them, hope that, you know, they gain some more experience, go through the school of hard knocks, you understand, and they might, you know, they might be saved. It's like when Paul... Um, advise one particular church to, you know, put them out to Satan, let Satan deal with them, you know, destroy the flesh that their soul might be preserved in the day of the revelation of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of our God, Father, Abu Kedus, the King of Kings, Kedemawi, Hadis Selassie. So let's go on with the teaching. Right here it says, likewise, also these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Mikael, the archangel, when contending with Diablos, 
he disputed about the body of Moshe, Moses, the author of, 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 of the book that we're studying here, these five books, the first five books. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation. We could go through a railing accusation, you understand, about these apostate Hebrews. Yes, they're better than the sheeple out there. They recognize that we as black people are Israelites. You understand, they recognize why and how we got over here, but they don't recognize the kingdom power of Haile Selassie. They don't recognize that that is the half of the story. You understand that they haven't been told, but most of them are willingly disobedient. Remember, many will say, Lord, Lord, right? But what does Christ say? Many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done this? Haven't we done that? But what's the qualification? He says, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. And what is iniquity? Lawlessness. You understand? So if they want to get into a, a reasoning or a debate or something, let's, let's reason about Torah. What does this mean? You understand? Let's go, and, and what is that word in Hebrew? And, and what's the real significance of that? What's the connection with ancient Egypt? We can't avoid ancient Egypt. Moses was learning all the wisdom of the Egypts. So why the Gentiles got it wrong is for the same reason why they're getting it wrong, because they're going after the Gentiles instead of going to our own pure root and source, our Ethiopian Hebrew root and source. But here's what it says right here. So no railing accusation. You know, but he said that the Lord, Adoni, rebuke thee. So, you know, when you come across those ones, you know, Jah rebuke you and keep it moving. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally, what they know on the natural level, what does it say? As brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the ways of Cain, because they're not able, Right? and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. You know, Korah, the sons of Korah, they gainsayed too against Moses. Remember what happened? The earth opened up, swallowed them up. These are spots in your feast. A very important feast is coming up. You understand? We can't, we, we can't share the table, you understand, with them with all these uh, filthy dreams and defiling the flesh and despising the dominion of the king of kings and speaking evil of the dignity, you know, of his majesty and of I and I, the elect Rastafari. But these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now get this right here, verse 14. And Enoch, the, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these. Now check this out. This is probably why, you know, this is probably why some of these um, black Jews or Hebrews are hating on Ethiopia. You understand? Because Enoch... Ethiopic Enoch. See, that record was preserved. So how come that record of Enoch, you understand, which is a part of the, the same canon of Scripture, was not preserved elsewhere but only in Ethiopia? Think about it. We are Hebrews, but some of them are Judases, you know, Iscariots. Recognize that, brothers and sisters. They may be our color, but they're not our kind. Not all who say they're Israel is Israel. You know what I'm saying? They're not the spiritual Israel. Even Paul talked about those Israelites who um, they, they were zealous, but they did not have the knowledge. So in these little foolish debates about how the Selassie, how Selassie worship, it's not Ethiopia, all this kind of, you know, you listen to it for a while, it's just nonsense, it's foolishness. It's, it's, but they have a lot of zeal. They have a whole lot of zeal, but very little true knowledge. But here it says, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, look and see, Adoni cometh with ten thousands of his saints of his caduce son, of his holy ones, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers and complainers walking out their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. 
But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, of Adonai, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, how that they told you there should be mockers, you know, those who want to mock, the mockers. So maybe you call part of this message the, the, the mockers, a message, a warning to the mockers, you understand, of Hila Selassie, right? How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit, having not the spirit, but the true mitmanon are assured and comforted. And here's the sevenfold duty for us as, as, as family, as, 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 as a fellowship, as brothers. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. And I must keep eyeing ourselves in the love of Jah, looking for the mercy of Adonai, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, to eternal life. And of some, of some of these, have compassion, making a difference. Others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, his Shekinah, Shekinah glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. And that's just a, a, a prayer, that last part, that doxology right there, um, a prayer. Let's get, let's get forward into this. You know, sometimes we just have to go with the Holy Spirit, you know, on that. This is all I and I mind. A, a, couple of, a couple of ones had, you know, brought it to our attention, you know, some of these uh, slanderers and mockers out there, even though they, they hold to part of that. That, that collective commonwealth truth that we are Israelites and they call themselves black Hebrews and black Jews. You understand? But to get into a, 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 a real reasoning, they, one's, one's not even coming in the right spirit, you know, and it's kind of obvious, and then we can't forget what the Bible already warns us. That's why we should be studying Torah, you understand, and not getting some of that foolish, some of those kind of foolish debates and, and you know, there's waste time, basically. But what we have here, the difference, right, Remember what we're talking about? We're talking about the, the law of sacrifices, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter, chapter uh, 7. And we are looking at the section from verse 11, verse 11 to verse 38. In other words, if you want to get a kind of a background and study on that, get a Schofield because the notes here are excellent. Notes here are really, are really study worthy. You understand? Study worthy. This is what we as true Beta Israel, you understand, who recognize I and I identity should be about. You understand? Because my people will perish because of a lack of what? You understand? A lack of what? A lack of knowledge, knowing the real truth. I mean, just to know that we are Israelites or Hebrews, ethnic Hebrews or ethnic Jews, true Ethiopian Hebrews is one thing. To know that Yeshua HaMoshiach is black or is an Ethiopian, that's one thing. You understand? But how many ones back then were black too? You understand? And, and, and you know what I'm saying? And they went astray. So holding to that, you still haven't been born again if you're caught up on those things. You know, and just pray. If, if, if you find that you're struggling with it, pray and ask for strength. You understand? And do. You understand? Do his will so you'll know it for yourself. Because once you know it for yourself... You're not going to forget it. You see, once you know the truth for yourself, once you have that experience of it, this is why we keep encouraging ones, that, you know, don't accept what we're saying as true. You understand? Look it up for yourself. Study. You understand? Study it for yourself. And giving all these references so ones can look it up for themselves. You understand? While others want to behave as, as natural beasts or as brute beasts or, you know, go to some craziness or some outward show among people and shouting on people and, you know, talking this and that, 
you know, and half a fact and a quarter of a fact and a small percentage of something that might be true. You understand? We don't want to deal with that. But here we have the Ten Commandments, right? So this is the section, Command Them. We have on one side, remember, it's really the ten words, but because of one familiarity with it, we'll just put this right here, the Ten Commandments, right? On one side, right? And then on the other side, we have what's the ceremonial, right, the ceremonial law. Now, pay, pay, pay careful attention to this. So we have the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law, right, is basically Leviticus, right, Leviticus. Leviticus is the ceremonial law. Under the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words of the Command, right, we have Exodus. All right? This was given in Exodus. Now, this was given before there was the apostasy. Remember, it says in the last days there would be a great apostasy. And even so, if your eye is open to see it, if your eye is illuminated, you can see that, that spiritual apostasy is still is, is going on right now. But the the spirit of it is what we have right here. You know what I mean? The spirit of it, the foundation of it, we have it right here in the scripture. So the, the Ten Commands or the commandment was called the royal law in James 2 and 8. The ceremonial law, when we go to Ephesians 2 and 15, guess what it's called? Don't guess. Look it up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. It is called the law contained in ordinances. This is what Leviticus is dealing with, these particular ordinances. You understand? Ordinances for what? That, that's a very good question. Ordinances for what? Let's look at this right here. Go over these sacrifices again and see what these sacrifices is all about. Yeah, right? It says that John told Moses to command Aaron and the priests about the rituals of sacrifice, sacrifices of the korbanot, the korbanot in Hebrew, in Leviticus 6 and 1. So we have the burnt offering, right? We have the burnt offering. We have the meal offering. We have the sin offering. We have the guilt offering. We have the peace offering. You know, we have about five types of offering. Now, the whole thing about the number five is kind of interesting. I don't know how much time we have in this particular in this particular section, but there's about five offerings. Notice that, like a hand, five. Now let's go over this five offerings for a moment. The five offerings. The first one, right? The burnt offering is is, is what kind of animal? It's it's a it's an ox, right? An ox or, or 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 a bull, a male, a male one, right? Well, that's what the ox is. The female's a cow. You understand? Remember, it was a golden calf, not a golden cow, not a golden bull. No, it was a golden calf, right? Anyway, we have the first one is the is 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 the the bull, right? Now the 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 bull, right? The bull offering. Let's just bring this up. The sculpture has an excellent footnote right here, giving many overlapping. Okay, it's the bullock. What's called a bullock or the ox. Now, it typifies Christ as a patient, enduring servant when you get into uh, understanding how that, that type, how Christ fulfilled that type. But we have a bull, we have a sheep or a ram, we have a uh, goat. You understand the goat is the sin offering. Then we have the, the turtle dove and a pigeon, right? Turtle dove and a pigeon. Now, notice something. The hand in Hebrew is the yod, right? The yod, right? The hand, right? It's the yod. And the yod is also known as the god. Like in, in English, you would say the G. The G will be like G for God. Well, in Hebrew, it will be the yod or the yod for the hand of God. And notice over and over and over and over in Scripture, it keeps talking about the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, right? So we have the bull. Now, look at the thumb. The thumb is that we call the auretat. It's, it's, like it's like a beast compared to the other ones. It's, it's the real key of, of, of the operation of the hand. If one suffers, you understand, certain hand ailments 
Some say it can affect one's lungs because if you look at the if you look at the thumbs and the lungs and you study that with the acupuncture and the and the meridians, there's a there's an obvious and even science now or their science is proving what the ancients already knew to be true. Now the the one that Christ is called is that first one. Notice the finger, the number one finger, right? He is the ram or the lamb. Notice Christ is not called the bull of God. He's called the lamb, or more correctly, if you study the words and study the scripture, the ram, the ram of God or the lamb, because he's the male one, the ram of God, right? So we have that, that, that Shema finger, you know, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Yahweh Ahad. You understand? Testifying to the oneness of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of the triune, the, the true triune, because there's false ones too. You understand? There's false triunes out there, but the true triune, you understand? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But why is that so important? You understand? It didn't go on to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and, and Israel, but it kept it in these three, in that threeness. If you study the scripture, you'll see the true Judaic trinity in the scripture, and it will connect with a true understanding with that illumination of Christ. You understand when you take the veil off of your eyes in the reading of the Old Testament. But now here's what I thought was interesting, comparing those five sacrifices, those five um, animal sacrifices. But notice something. Before they had committed the golden calf, trespass, and idolatry, there was no sacrifice. There, there, there was no sacrifice. But after, you know saying, there was no sacrifice for sin or for guilt or for trespass or for, but afterward, you know what I'm saying, it's almost like Josh said to them, oh, you'll want to go back to that old bleep bleep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Here's what we'll do. You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost like y'all are not grown enough you intend to take full responsibility. So he's going to use, see, I heard a preacher one time say something, actually a couple of preachers, you know, so some of the things that they say is, is, is correct. It's just the, the main foundational thing, you know, like Christ said to the Pharisees, you know, you should, you know, you should, you should do that but not leave off the, the, the more important matters of, 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 of the preaching. They preach some interesting thing, but preachers said that, the Lord will use the very same thing, you know, that 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 John is so almighty that he can use the very same thing. In other words, that which was a blessing can turn into a curse, and that which was a curse can turn into a blessing, you understand, through the almighty. So the almighty, understanding the psychology of the people, it's like right now what black folks are going through with all this bling bling, this golden calf, and this nonsense, and create, and you know, this while on all levels. It's that very same thing that is probably necessary for the majority or at least a remnant of them. You know, like a lot of us, we were doing a whole lot of other stuff that we probably wouldn't do anymore, not being born again. But even when we look back on those days, that was almost an important part to get us here, you know what I'm saying, to get us to this particular point in time. So I thought that was interesting what the, um, some pastor or preacher had 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 mentioned on that, so it's like Yah, Yah said, okay, you know, you know, and then the only tribe that was faithful, remember, was, was Levi. You know what I'm saying? So they became now the keepers. You know what I'm saying? Moses fraternity, you could say Moses brotherhood. They became the keepers now, but they would keep them under law. See here in the Ten Commands or the Ten Words in Exodus. Exodus, actually, chapter 20, if you need to go there, chapter 20, they were in-laws. You see, so here they were, let me write this, they were in-laws, right? And here they were under law. Now, the Bible tells us something very important about law. I don't know if I'll be able to get into this, this other part, but let's just continue follow the Spirit on this. Um, the Bible tells us something very important about, about law. Right? Who is the law for? You understand? And why is the law, why are we in laws and not under law? 
You understand? Know and what is the real purpose? You understand? Know what is the real purpose in that sense of the law? It tells us in first uh, epistle of of Paulos, of Paul the Apostle to uh, uh, Timotheos or to Timothy, chapter 1, verse, um, chapter 1, verse uh, 7. You understand? Know verse 7. I like verse 6 right there. It says, from which some having swerved. The Israelites swerved. You know, and that's the way the hip, the hip niggas talk, right? You swerve. Get your swerve on, right? Check it out. From which some having swerved have turned aside to vain janglings. Bojangles, vain jangling. Verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law. They desire to be teachers of Torah. You know what I'm saying? To be teachers of the law, or teachers of the Bible teachers. But they're understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. They don't really understand what they're talking about. Because if you ask, why, why Leviticus? You know, we, we didn't even think about this before, but we, we, we had it in I and I, you know, it, it was like in I and I consciousness, but we didn't give articulation to it. It's like, yeah, this whole animal killing thing and sacrifices, wow, think about that. Cause I think about the uh, Romans where it says that, you know, the, 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 the animals were subjected, you understand, to this. But the animals, the animal creations waiting for the sons of God, you find that in Romans. So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. And then Rastafari, you know, we are very true Rastafari is against that whole deadest thing. You understand the, the whole thing about, you know, the whole deadest thing. Some to a, 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 an extreme that goes outside of even Jah's law, but the basic, the basic idea, you understand, is basically in tune with what the Almighty's will was. So he brought them from here where they were in-laws, you understand? Know they committed trespass. We could put the golden calf right here, almost like th that was the crossroads. And now they came under law. You understand? Know they came under law. But even under law, the key words are if, if one want to sacrifice. And because they, they came out of, how can you say, they came out of a condition, you know what I mean, um, where sacrifices, you have to understand even how they got to animal sacrifice. So before animal sacrifice, there was human sacrifice. You, 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 have, to, you have to really understand that. After the fall, you understand, there was, there, was, there, was, there was human sacrifice. Then when it rose up a little bit, there was animal sacrifice. Then at true spirituality in the return to God, there is self-sacrifice. You understand? As Bob Marley and, 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 and Paul said in, in his epistle, he said, um, be a living sacrifice. You understand? Be a living sacrifice where, where you mortify your flesh. Not, not kill that animal as a, as a substitute, you understand? But you kill off the spiritual desires. But you have to recognize that folks, even like even today, you understand, are not very spiritual. They become so material. They, they really can't see the spiritual aspects of it. So it took, it took um, some generations and experiences, you understand, before, you understand, the coming of the Moshiach at the right time and at the appointed time to do away with these, these, uh, these animal sacrifices for, for, um, for sin. But it says right here, um, but we know that the law is good. We know that Jah's law is good. If a man use it lawfully, hmm. knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. The law is not made for a tzaddik. The law is not made for a tzaddik. It's made for ametenya, you know, chatiatenya, talalafi watch. You understand? Know Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the what? Lawless and disobedient. You understand? Know because they, don't, they didn't really shema. They didn't really hear. You understand? Know they, they might have been Israelites, but they didn't hear. They didn't say hear everybody. They said hear, O Israel. So they might be of Israel, but they're not Israel. You understand? Know but for the lawless and the disobedient, 
is the law. The ungodly and for sinners is the law. For unholy and profane is the law. For murderers of fathers and mothers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers is the law. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, that's almost like slave slavers, those who those who enslave the, the beta Israel, the lost sheep. You understand? Talking about Gentile the Gentile uh, world conspiracy or white su supremacy or the Anglo-Americans or whatever other names they want to use. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. If you go into the language, it means healthy teaching. Healthy teaching. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christos Jesus Getachen Adonenu, our master, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So even Paul is going on the record saying, listen, yeah, I'm in this position now, but I wasn't always like this. So he wasn't faking the funk, you understand? But he was giving a testimony, and that showed that he really received the spirit, you understand? Because ones can't really testify and give, and give a real testimony about what sort of person they was because they still are those same people. You understand? They may pretend like, yeah, I'm different, but where's the testimony? You know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 you did it all yourself. No, no, Jesus Christ. Not our Lord did it for you. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying. So you, you know them by their fruit or their fruitlessness. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christos Jesus. The faith and the love. See, so Christ now becomes that, that, that object, you know, that object. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it's not the love and the grace in me. No, it's because of the grace and the love that's in him. You understand? Know and that is what we're seeking to approximate, but we have to learn of it. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christos, Jesus, or the Moshiach, Yehoshua, came into the world to save Hatiatenyoch, to save sinners of whom I am chief. You understand? Know Wow. You, you know, when you, so when you read it, you've got to put yourself in that mind. Like, wow. You know, I mean, because what, what happens, people deceive themselves when they read this and it's talking about sinners or evil people, or people doing lies where they look at the other guy. They're like, yeah, that's that guy over there. But if you do that, it ain't going to be profitable for you. You understand? Because, see, you, you, you should know already or be learning and you're not acting on it. You know what I'm saying? So how would you think the Holy Spirit will entrust to you more? You see, so it's about that hearing, that obedience. How be it? For this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first, Jesus Christos, might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter my men or accept as true, not be like Eve, but accept as true my men from the root amen, on him to life everlasting now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's interesting because, you know, the only wise God. You see, there's a lot of so-called gods out there, but they're not wise. They're foolish gods. But to the only, you know what I'm saying? The only wise God, this charge I commit to thee, son Timothy, or Lidge Timothy, Timotheos, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. You understand? A good warfare, like as Matthew says, until what? The philosophy, until one nation until 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 the until the fulfilled we Africans, we Ethiopian Hebrews, we will fight if necessary, as we are confident we have the Amen in the victory of good over evil. But it's not just a physical warfare. You see everybody's
gun to hold for the physical warfare, but then when the physical warfare starts, you recognize they don't got no heart because they didn't build up their faith. They didn't build up their faith. You understand? They, they, they didn't build up their, 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 their spirit state, their mind state. Holding faith. Look at the next verse, the verse 19. Holding faith. That means seizing hold on it. And a good conscience. You know what the King of Kings teaches? Anyone who suffers from a guilty conscience is never free until he makes what? Peace. You understand? Until he makes peace with his conscience. And the whole context of that teaching, that nigger, that speech, that, that utterance of Abba Kedus, of Kedemawi Hala Selassie, points to Yeshua, points to Jesus Christos. So those mockers and slanderers of his majesty, how dare you? All we got to say to you, repent while you still have time. Consider repentance before it's too late. You understand? Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So they haven't reached their true shore. You understand? And even the boat, when you think of the whole idea of the boat as metaphor, it's a very interesting, you know, it's a very interesting <laughs> Very interesting type. And then he says this, of whom is he Manius and Alexander Skinder, with whom I have delivered to Satan. Here, who are the Apollos? He said, listen, well, I was just telling you that some of these ones have gone shipwreck. I'm going to give you an example of, 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 of two, um, of two uh, wolves in sheep clothing, so to speak, Hermanius and Alexander whom I have delivered to Satan, turn them over to the jailer, you understand, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So it's a very serious thing, insulting dignities, you understand, M much less the king of kings. I mean, how dare you? You understand, how dare you? Take this, this task over time to cross over from low degrees to high degrees and come out of that foolishness before it's too late, you understand, because... um. Oh, time will tell. You say you You know, time will tell. But let's get into let's get into this portion. Let's continue a little bit more, a little bit more with this right here. So, another key difference, right? So we know that the ceremonial law, the Levitical law, is called the law containing ordinances. Now, the, the interesting thing about this, seeing that Passover is coming up, what does away with this? It's the one sacrifice. You understand? The Lamb of God, the one sacrifice. Remember, we were teaching about the fivefold sacrifice and the similarity with the five fingers of the hand? It's interesting because which finger is the sin? You, you notice that the sin offering. You understand? The sin offering is, that, is like that middle finger. Think about it for a moment. Now, some would say, oh, you're just making this up. Well, you go check it out. Prove that we're making it up, and we'll prove that actually it's based on the truth because it's what we're proving right now. But um, that point being as it is, let's look at the difference here again. The Ten Commands, it was spoken by God. It was spoken by Jah himself. Now, the ceremonial law was spoken by who? It was spoken by Moses, Leviticus chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Now, when we look at the Ten Command or the Ten Words, you understand, it was written with the finger of Ha Elohim. It was written with the finger of God. What about the ceremonial law by comparison? It was written by Moses in a book, according to Second Chronicles chapter 35 and 12. Now, the Ten Words or the Ten Commands, as you call them, it was placed in the ark. This was put in the tabot. What about the ceremonial law? It was placed in the side of the tabot. It was placed in the side in a book. Think about that for a moment. Remember, this was written on stone. Hieroglyphically, we can say engraved. It was an engraving. This, which is the ten words or the commandment, is to stand forever and ever. Psalm 111, verses 7 and 8. What about this, the ceremonial law? It was nailed to the cross, the ceremonial law. And see, this is the reason for the Fasica, the Passover season. 
You know what I'm saying? So now we're, we're, we're seeing with the illumination of Christ, that veil taken off of our eyes in the reading of the Old Testament, we can see now the connection. So when you hear it said that what Christ did on the cross, he fulfilled the Old Testament types. Well, which Old Testament types? Let's, let's preach on that. Let's hear on that. You know what I'm saying? It would do so much for humanity to know the truth. This was nailed to the cross, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Lastly, but not leastly, this, the ten words, the ten commandments, the commandment, Exodus 20, that make us in-laws, it was not destroyed by HaMoshiach. HaMoshiach did not destroy the ten words of the ten commandments. But guess what? The ceremonial law, it was abolished. It was abolished by who? It was abolished by our black Lord and Savior, Joshua HaMoshiach, by Jesus Christos, by Jesus Christ. The ceremonial law that put us under the law. So when you hear Hawadi Apollo says that we're no longer under the law, he's not being lawless, but he knows that there's more than one kind of law in the scriptures. But, but the Gentile and the ignorant Christians, they think when he say law, well, the law must be the Ten Commandments. But, you know, this, this is what is so foolish, you understand, about ignorance. You see, ignorance will lead you to atheism, you understand, even if you're talking about a God, but you, you, you're not making no sense because you don't know you, you, what you're talking about. So there's a difference between the law or the command right, that has the ten words, the Decalogue, and the ceremonial laws, you understand? This was a moral code. This was a sacrificial code. You understand? This was a moral code. But when they went to the golden calf, the golden calf, wasn't it this was worshiping a, a golden calf, but they were naked. What do you think they were doing, just naked, just, just, just walking around naked? Come on, man. You know what they were doing. They're doing the same thing that some of y'all might be doing or have been doing out in this spiritual Egypt. Same thing. Same people. You understand? So this was abolished. The ceremonial law was abolished by Hamoshia because that which was more perfect, you understand, that could take us to that spiritual, you understand, that spiritual level. This was not able to perfect anything, but this kept the seed, you understand, this kept the seed in check. You understand? This kept the seed in check because if they were left up to their own. You know what would have happened? If after all that Jah had done by the hand of Jah, bringing them out of that spiritual Egypt, the Duat, the Tuat, so forth and so on, through all, all of that, and then they would get to this point where they couldn't even be patient. They couldn't even be patient when they thought, what happened to Moses? You understand? He left us out here to perish. And, they, you know. I mean, it's just like, like we always say, it's just like niggas. You know what I'm saying? This is how we also know them in spirit and in truth. The truth is the evidence, the fact that says the Afro Shemites, the Hebrew Israelites were, were Ethiopian, black, African peoples. That's, that's just the truth of it. But then we know it in spirit too. When we start to study it, we're like, what kind of people would act this way? <laughs> you, know, you know, what kind of people would act this way? You know, and 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 the and the and the church says niggas. You know what I mean? Niggas would act this way. Amen. You're right. You got it. You know what I'm saying? In spirit, the spirit you get you get the spirit of the people, and then when you study the evidence, the truth of it, boom. You understand? Two or three witnesses, right? Every word is justified. So that that is very, you know, that is very important because. The two great commandments are, love the Lord with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. You know the Trinity in, in that right there. With all thy what? Thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind. You know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The second great commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. But you can't practice love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love Adoni, if you don't love Jah, if you don't love the true God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, how can you? You see, that's why the, the first one and the second one. You don't count two, one. 
You understand? Unless you're going backward, but you count one, two. So the first, the great commandment, love the Lord with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. And the second, love your neighbor, your bread companion. Now, now see, we have to get into some of the linguistics and the language when we, when we touch on um, neighbor. Because some, see, some would think it means the person living next door. In a sense, it did mean that, but it more specifically means bamarinya balingera, bale ingera, one who has bread. If you look in Ethiopian society, Ethiopian Hebrew society is what the, what they call a mesop. The mesop would be really the perfect sort of type of table or tables like that to have a a paso fasica seda. You know, in the mesop, you know, the round table that has the the covering and is and is embroidered and very beautifully um, hand woven, hand made, hand crafted, should we say? Um, the one you would eat that bread, the injera with, and the wet, you understand, and the own wet with was your bread companion, bale injera. Because if you had some bread, you share it with someone, and the one you share your bread with is your bread companion. But in the Biblical sense of neighbor, you know, since because now we just think that neighbor in, in, in the Gentile misunderstanding is the person living next door or something like that. Well, that is your neighbor in that sense, but in the biblical sense, your neighbor was the one you shared your bread with, you know, saying the one you ate with, you know, what I mean, that's why when we read the messianic psalms, is the one who, who ate my bread lifted up his heel against me, he always. So you can get the inner meaning of that. Now, John's ten commandments or the ten words, they hang on these two. Yeshua said that they hang. Notice the key word. In some of the newer Bibles, they change the word that, um, that, that, that they hang on these. You understand? They change it. They take the hang out. But really, I mean, they are crucified. They hang just like the, the brazen serpent hung. They hang just like our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, hung. You understand? The, the first four on the first table, they tell us how to love Jah with all our heart. Now, when we look at the two, the two tablets, the two stone tablets, the hieroglyphic, the, 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 the hieroglyphic or Hebraic, should we say, but done in a hieroglyphic um for lack of a better word, style, the first four, which are on the first um, tablet, they tell us how to love Jah with, with our heart. In other words, have no other, no other gods, you understand? Not to worship, you know, the brazen and the other kind of crafted images, like you see in a lot of these, these Gentile churches. They have these big statues all over the place, you know, not to, to their statues, you know, to honor somebody, but people go there and they actually bow down and start praying to these statues. That's worshiping. Not to take God's name in vain and to remember his senbet, his Sabbath, his Shabbat day, to keep it holy, to keep it set aside.